In today's video, I will be talking about London, the capital city of the United Kingdom, UK. There is perhaps no city in the world as popular as the city of London, so, buckle up and let's go. London is the capital and largest city of England and the United Kingdom. The city stands on the River Thames in the southeast of England, at the head of its 80 km estuary leading to the North Sea. London has been a major settlement for two millennia. Londinium was founded by the Romans. The city of London, London's ancient core and financial centre, is an area of just 2.9 square kilometres, and colloquially known as the square mile, and retains boundaries that closely follow its medieval limits. The adjacent city of Westminster is an inner London borough and has for centuries been the location of much of the national government. 31 additional boroughs north and south of the river also comprise modern London. London is governed by the Mayor of London and the London Assembly. City of London, is one of the 33 boroughs that make up the large metropolis of Greater London. The city, as it is known, is only a component, relatively small in area, of the larger urban area known as London. Its area corresponds closely to that of the ancient city from which modern London has grown. The city belongs geographically to the historic county of Middlesex, but its special status and privileges gave it autonomy from that county for most of its history. According to the World Bank, the City of London has a resident population of 9,401 as at December 2020, but over 500,000 people are employed there. Some estimates even put the number of workers in the city to be over 1 million. About three quarters of the jobs in the City of London are in the financial, professional, and associated business services sectors. Greater London is the most densely populated and wealthy region in the UK. In 2018, it had a population of 8.8 .8 million, which represents 13.4% of the UK's total population, according to Eurostats. In 2017, London had a GDP per inhabitant of $76,179, which was well above the UK average of $51,102. What is the difference between London and the City of London? The name London is now ordinarily used for a far wider area than just the city. London most often denotes the sprawling London metropolis, or the 32 London boroughs, in addition to the city of London itself. This wider usage of London is documented as far back as 1888, when the County of London was created. Now let's take a little quiz. Do you say London England or London UK? While it's common to hear or see the term London, England, technically this is incorrect, as it implies that London is the capital of England alone, rather than the capital of the entire United Kingdom. Next question, is London bigger than New York? London's population stood at 8.3 million people, while New York City's population stood at 8.4 million people as at December 2020. London, however, has much more room for its inhabitants, it's 357.4 square kilometers bigger than New York City, so it's pretty safe to say that New York is way more crowded than London. Next question, London and New York City, which is the greatest? It is New York City. In 2007, McKinsey did a study on which of the world's cities will be the greatest city in the world of the future. New York was still the front-runner, but London was gaining, not just as a financial centre, but as a global capital of wealth, prestige, and culture. At the time, London was indisputably the world's most important international equity market, with three times as many IPOs as the New York Stock Exchange and more finance workers than New York. Five years later, as a share of the city economy, and New York's GDP per capita was slightly higher. The cities are evenly matched. London has a slight edge as the world's leading financial center, ranking first to New York's second. New York's greater metro area is substantially larger, with roughly 22 million people to London's 14 million. And New York is economically more powerful, ranking second only to Tokyo, with London third, in the Economic Power Index. It must be noted however that since the UK exited from the European Union by way of Brexit, London's prospects for catching up to New York City as the greatest city of the future has greatly diminished. If you are planning a trip to London UK, the following are the areas you must explore. 
Number 1. The Tower of London. The Tower of London is the repository of the crown jewels. It is a castle and a fortress and was a prison for some of England's political prisoners as well as a palace for some of England's monarchs. It is located directly by the River Thames in central London, just outside the city of London. The complex looks like a traditional castle, with two concentric rings of buildings and is surrounded by a moat, which is a ditch filled with water. Beside the castle is the Tower Bridge, a beautiful old bridge that crosses the Thames. The yeoman warders conduct tours of the tower complex. There are several restaurants and restrooms outside the entrance for those who wish to eat and refresh themselves before or after touring the tower. The Tower of London, officially Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress of the Tower of London, is a historic castle on the north bank of the River Thames in central London. Throughout its history, the Tower of London has served many purposes, including royal residence, barracks, armory, prison and museum. The Tower is a 900-year-old castle and fortress in central London that is notable for housing the crown jewels and for holding many famous and infamous prisoners. As tradition going back 700 years, all yeoman warders and their families live within the tower walls. Right now about 150 people, including a doctor and a chaplain, among the seven prisoners executed on Tower Green were three queens of England, Anne Boleyn, second wife of Henry VIII, Catherine Howard, Henry's fifth wife and Lady Jane Grey. In 1381 AD, a rabble of peasants managed to successfully attack the tower in the Peasants' Revolt of 1381 AD, this was one of many battles at the Tower of London. The tower remains a working fortress today, with a strong military presence. Visiting the tower is highly recommended for people of all ages. Truly educational and a fantastic way to spend the morning or afternoon. You should spare at least two to three hours to enjoy this magnificent piece of history. The crown jewel is a must-see, but there are lots things to see and do. The facilities are kept ultra clean. Number 2. The Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge is a combined bascule and suspension bridge in London, built between 1886 and 1894. The bridge crosses the River Thames close to the Tower of London and has become a world-famous symbol of London. As a result, it is sometimes confused with London Bridge, about half a mile upstream. An iconic London landmark and one of Britain's best-loved historic sites, Tower Bridge is open to the public 363 days a year. Within the bridge's iconic structure and magnificent Victorian engine rooms, the Tower Bridge exhibition is the best way of exploring the most famous bridge in the world. Go learn about this incredible feat of Victorian engineering, discover how the bridge is raised and enjoy stunning panoramic views across London from the high-level walkways, 42 metres above the River Thames. You will love this bridge. The view from a double-decker bus in the evening is exciting because you can see the lights of the bridge, the London Eye, Parliament, and boats on the river, plus their reflections in the water. Number 3. The Buckingham Palace and the Changing of the Guard. Buckingham Palace is the London residence of the current Queen of England and the centre of royal hospitality and state functions. It is not the only residence or palace belonging to the royal family. It was built by the Duke of Buckingham in 1703 and became the London residence of the British monarch in 1837 when Victoria became Queen. Its garden is the largest private garden in London. Buckingham Palace is perhaps the most venerated building in England, and along with the Houses of Parliament, represents the heart and soul of the British Empire. The palace has 775 rooms and the state rooms, used for official and state functions. Buckingham Palace is recognised around the world as the focus of national and royal celebrations as well as the backdrop to the regular changing the guard ceremony. Explore the magnificent state rooms which are open to visitors for 10 weeks each summer and on selected dates during winter and spring. During a visit to Buckingham Palace, visitors can see the 19 magnificent state rooms, which provide the setting for ceremonial occasions and official entertaining. All rooms are furnished with many of the greatest treasures from the royal collection. Changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace is the ceremony where the Queen's Guard hands over responsibility for protecting Buckingham Palace and St. James's Palace to the new guard. 
It is an iconic and most famous palace in the world and official residence of the Queen. The architecture is very beautiful. Number 4. Visit Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square is a public square in the city of Westminster, central London, established in the early 19th century around the area formerly known as Charing Cross. The square's name commemorates the Battle of Trafalgar, the British naval victory in the Napoleonic Wars over France and Spain that took place on 21 October 1805 off the coast of Cape Trafalgar on the Spanish coast. The site around Trafalgar Square has been a significant landmark since the 1200s. The site of the present square formerly contained the elaborately designed, enclosed courtyard, King's Muse. After George IV moved the Muse to Buckingham Palace, the area was redeveloped by John Nash, but progress was slow after his death, and the square did not open until 1844. The 52 meters Nelson's column at its center is guarded by four lion statues. A number of commemorative statues and sculptures occupy the square, but the fourth plinth, left empty since 1840, has been host to contemporary art since 1999. Prominent buildings facing the square include the National Gallery, St. Martin in the Fields, Canada House, and South Africa House. William Railton designed the column and statue at the center of the square, to honor Admiral Nelson, after his victory in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. The granite statue was sculpted by E. H. Bailey. It is five meters high and stands on a bronze platform made from old guns from the Woolwich Arsenal foundry. The square has been used for community gatherings and political demonstrations, including Bloody Sunday in 1887, the culmination of the first Aldermaston March, anti-war protests, and campaigns against climate change. A Christmas tree has been donated to the Square Bu Norway since 1947 and is erected for 12 days before and after Christmas Day. The Square is a center of annual celebrations on New Year's Eve. It was well known for its feral pigeons until their removal in the early 21st century. People of a certain age who heard about going to Trafalgar Square to feed the pigeons are disappointed to learn that the City of London is trying to get rid of the pigeons, as they are suspected of causing diseases. Number 5. Churchill's War Rooms. Secret underground headquarters where Prime Minister Winston Churchill lived and worked during World War II. Churchill War Rooms, are part of Imperial War Museums, and includes the original Cabinet War Rooms, the wartime bunker which sheltered Churchill and his staff during bombardments. These historic rooms once buzzed with planning and plotting, strategies and secrets. Discover the secrets of the Second World War in the underground nerve center where Churchill and his war cabinet lived and worked. There is so much to learn, and you really cannot get through all the visuals in one visit, but it gives you a sense of insight into how it must have been. Number 6. The National Gallery. The National Gallery is an art museum in Trafalgar Square in the city of Westminster, in central London. Founded in 1824, it houses a collection of over 2,300 paintings dating from the mid-13th century to 1900. Here you will find the national collection of paintings in the Western European tradition, and some of the finest collections of paintings in the world, and contains works by artists as diverse as Leonardo da Vinci, Vincent van Gogh, Rembrandt and Botticelli. It is on show 361 days a year, free of charge. A beautiful place full of interesting pieces of art, and by far one of the best galleries in the world. Number 7. Westminster Abbey. Formally titled the Collegiate Church of St. Peter at Westminster, Westminster Abbey which seats up to 2,000 people at a time, is known as the place where all the coronations of English and British monarchs since William the Conqueror was crowned in 1066. It is a place of royal weddings and more than 3,300 prominent Britons, including prime ministers, monarchs, scientists, and military heroes. One of the more recent interments was that of the British theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. Westminster Abbey has the status of a Church of England, Royal Peculiar, a church responsible directly to the sovereign. As such, it is no longer an abbey or a cathedral. 
It is different from Westminster Cathedral, the mother church of the Catholic Church in England located in Westminster, and the seat of the Archbishop of Westminster and located about one kilometre from Westminster Abbey. Westminster Abbey was initially built by Henry III in 1245 and it is one of the most important Gothic buildings of England. At first home of Benedictine monks, the Coronation Church since 1066 and the final resting place of 17 monarchs. It contains a treasury full of paintings, stained glass, pavements, textiles, books and various other artefacts plus the most significant collection of monumental sculptures of the UK. The Queen's Diamond Jubilee Galleries in the Abbey's Triforium opened in June 2018. Here, you will explore over 1,000 years of history in this truly unique space, high above the Abbey floor. Number 8. The Victoria and Albert Museum. The Victoria and Albert Museum in London is the world's largest museum of applied and decorative arts and design, as well as sculpture, housing a permanent collection of over 2.27 million objects. It was founded in 1852 and named after Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The world's greatest museum of art and design, the museum's collections are unrivaled in their diversity. Explore historical and contemporary art and design, including works of art from many of the world's richest cultures. This museum has an amazing collection of applied art, furniture, costume, ceramics, pottery, sculpture and jewelry. Number 9. The St. Paul's Cathedral. St. Paul's Cathedral is an Anglican cathedral in London, United Kingdom, which, as the Cathedral of the Bishop of London, serves as the Mother Church of the Diocese of London. It sits on Ludgate Hill at the highest point of the City of London and is a Grade I listed building. Rebuilt by Christopher Wren after the Great Fire of 1666 AD, St. Paul's has been the site of many historic state occasions, including Sir Winston Churchill's state funeral and the royal wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer. A busy working Christian community with several daily services at which all are welcome. St. Paul's also welcomes visitors with access to five levels of the cathedral including the Whispering Gallery with its unique acoustics and the stone and golden galleries atop the dome offering breathtaking panoramic views over London. Multimedia guides are in eight languages for adults and children, and are included with sightseeing admission, as well as free guided tours. A truly beautiful cathedral, the ceilings are breathtakingly lovely and the history makes for a pleasant interlude within a vibrant city. Number 10. The Natural History Museum. The Natural History Museum in London is a museum that exhibits a vast range of specimens from various segments of natural history. It is one of three major museums on Exhibition Road in South Kensington, the others being the Science Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum. A center of scientific excellence in the discovery of taxonomy and biodiversity, this world-famous museum promotes the discovery and enjoyment of the natural world through such exciting exhibits as the Life and Earth Galleries, Wildlife Garden and Geological Collections. This is one of the best museums in the world. It is fun, entertaining and most importantly educational. From the fantastic blue whale skeleton in the main entrance to the special human biology and moon sections, it is difficult to take it all in and even harder to ensure you cover everything. All exhibits are well presented, well explained and at the correct level of complexity. There are OADS of interactive things for the kids and adults. Number 11. The Palace of Westminster, also known as the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. The Houses of Parliament is the Palace of Westminster, the meeting place of the House of Commons and the House of Lords of the United Kingdom. Houses of Parliament may also refer to, Chambers of Parliament, the two houses of bicameral legislatures. Most of this iconic building was built in the mid-19th century following a devastating fire in 1834. Westminster Hall survived the fire and dates from 1097 AD. You can go into the Houses of Parliament, either on a tour, to go and see a debate or come be mit tea, to watch Prime Minister's questions or Minister's questions, to attend a talk or event or to go and petition your MP. You can't however, just walk around and see the inside of the Palace of Westminster unguided. 
Big Ben is the nickname for the Great Bell of the Striking Clock at the north end of the Palace of Westminster. The name is frequently extended to refer to both the clock and the clock tower. The official name of the tower in which Big Ben is located was originally the Clock Tower. It was renamed Elizabeth Tower in 2012 to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Elizabeth II, Queen of the United Kingdom. It is a marvelous example of the architecture and shows the complexity of UK's history. You can visit the Houses of Lords and Commons on a guided tour. Number 12. Greenwich. The Royal Observatory, Greenwich is an observatory situated on a hill in Greenwich Park, overlooking the River Thames. It played a major role in the history of astronomy and navigation, and because the prime meridian passes through it, it gave its name to Greenwich Mean Time. At Greenwich, you can see the GMT Meridian Line for free if you take the disabled walk incline up. To observatory. At 1 p.m. the time ball drops from the observatory every day. British astronomers have long used the Royal Observatory as a basis for measurement. Four separate meridians have passed through the buildings, defined by successive instruments. The basis of longitude, the meridian that passes through the airy transit circle, first used in 1851, was adopted as the world's prime meridian at the International Meridian Conference at Washington, D.C. on the 22nd of October 1884. Voting took place on the 13th of October. Subsequently, nations across the world used it as their standard for mapping and timekeeping. The prime meridian was marked by a brass, but was later replaced by a stainless steel strip in the observatory's courtyard. Once the buildings became a museum in 1960, and since 16 December 1999, it has been marked by a powerful green laser shining north across the London night sky. Set on the south bank of the Thames, approximately five miles from central London, this city borough is rich in maritime history and features the old Royal Naval College, National Maritime Museum and the Royal Observatory, which was built by Sir Christopher Wren for King Charles II. Number 13. The Imperial War Museums. Imperial War Museums is a British national museum organisation with branches at five locations in England, three of which are in London. Founded as the Imperial War Museum in 1917, the museum was intended to record the civil and military war effort and sacrifice of Britain and its empire during the First World War. Imperial War Museum, London gives voice to the extraordinary experiences of ordinary people forced to live in a world torn apart by conflict. From the wonder of its world-famous atrium to the countless discoveries on each of its six floors, it is a place filled with the power to move, surprise and inspire. You will receive an interesting presentation of history at five floors. You will be welcomed by pair of 15-inch naval guns. You will see for yourself the infamous V-2 rocket as well as cool Hawker Harrier installation. Definitely worth a visit while in London. Number 14. Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. Founded by the pioneering American actor and director Sam Wanamaker, Shakespeare's Globe is a unique international resource dedicated to the exploration of Shakespeare's work and the playhouse for which he wrote, through the connected means of performance and education. Together, the Globe Theatre Company, Shakespeare's Globe Exhibition and Globe Education seek to further the experience and international understanding of Shakespeare in performance. You will learn so much about life in medieval England. The theatre is open to the elements and when it rains, those standing at the front, and the grounds, get wet. The tour is full of interesting facts, and if you are lucky, you will be allowed up on the stage to see the theatre from the perspective of the actors. Number 15. The Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly Circus is a road junction and public space of London's West End in the city of Westminster. It was built in 1819 to connect Regent Street with Piccadilly. In this context, a circus, from the Latin word meaning circle, is a round open space at a street junction. Piccadilly now links directly to the theatres on Shaftesbury Avenue, as well as the Haymarket, Coventry Street onwards to Leicester Square and Glasshouse Street. The circus is close to major shopping and entertainment areas in the West End. Its status as a major traffic junction has made Piccadilly Circus a busy meeting place and a tourist attraction in its own right. 
The circus is particularly known for its video display and neon signs mounted on the corner building on the northern side, as well as the Shaftesbury Memorial Fountain and Statue of Anteros, which is popularly, though mistakenly, believed to be of Eros. It is surrounded by several notable buildings, including the London Pavilion and Criterion Theatre. Directly underneath the plaza is Piccadilly Circus Underground Station, part of the London Underground System. Piccadilly Circus has to be the most famous road intersections in the world. It's iconic for several reasons, the unique architecture surrounding it, the iconic advertisements that adorn the buildings, the statue of Anteros in the middle. It's a place that's known all over the world. So, this was all about London, the capital city of the United Kingdom, UK. Hope you liked this video. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know by subscribing to this channel and pressing the bell icon. Thank you, and see you next time with another video. Bye.